As both a coach and an athlete, I'm on a constant exploration for growth. Since becoming a coach, I've developed this deep passion to learn as much as I can about cycling and training and all there is with, to do with those two things so that I can apply it both to myself and the athletes that I work with. Passion for your work is a little bit of discovery followed by a lot of development and then a lifetime of deepening. So with that being said, here are a few of the highlights that I learned in 2023. We've all heard Dylan Johnson rant about polarized training and low intensity training, but I wasn't really convinced about it until I picked up my boy, Matt Fitzgerald's 80-20 running this year. I finally read this book. It's been on my read list for a long time. And after reading this book, I am more convinced than ever that to take your cycling to the next level, the number one thing that you should be focused on is increasing your volume. On page 242, he says, athletes got twice as much benefit from each additional minute of low intensity training in their program as they got from each additional minute of high intensity training. Basically what I learned is that if you've got a solid training plan, the next thing to do is to increase that plan's volume. Volume, volume, volume. It's almost always better if you can ride more. Notice how I said almost because there are life circumstances and everybody is individual and there's certain limitations and so you can't always just ride and ride and ride there are things that if you go beyond a certain point of volume life gets to be too much that's probably when it's too much volume number two don't be afraid of change about halfway through this season i turned my back on crit racing that sounds bad. I loved crit racing. I really love all types of, of bike racing, and so I loved crit racing. But I turned my back on that, and I, man, I really had to make some serious decisions, and I ended up turning towards gravel glory. That sounds so goofy saying, but that's what I've decided to do, and the main reason for that is I had to take a serious step back and think, where are my strengths and weaknesses as a cyclist? And I believe that the longer distance of gravel racing will suit me better physiologically, just my body type, uh, the skills that I have as a cyclist. So what I'm saying is don't be afraid to change your goals to fit your gifts. To go back to the whole talent conversation, some of us are just talented for certain types of cycling, and so we should go after those certain types of cycling with more passion and with more focus. Basically, like find what you're talented at and do it. Number three, Podcasts are cool. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts, but this year I did a lot of podcasts. It's pretty regular now that I'm doing two podcasts every single week between the Bonk Bros and the Matchbox. And it's been even cooler to see that people actually listen to these things. Like, I still kind of find that hard to believe that people listen to us. Uh, but it's, it's really cool. It's really cool to see those two things growing, especially the Bonk Bros. Like, so many people have come up to me and the guys at races and said they listen to the podcast, which is crazy. And we're starting to talk to sponsors, like people who want to give us money. That's hilarious. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, between the two, it's a nice balance of like the Matchbox is serious training focused. And then you've got the Bonk Bros where we're just goofing off, being silly, being, you know, ding dongs like normal. So it's been pretty cool. I'm excited to see where those podcasts go in the next year. So now would be a good time to mention how you could support me in both my podcast and YouTube creating abilities. It's probably not surprising that racing bikes doesn't make you the big bucks. So every little bit of support is deeply appreciated. And so what you can do is head on over to my Patreon account. You can become a monthly supporter. This helps me to do more content like this for people to enjoy and hopefully get some benefit from. Number four, dad watts. What I mean by this is that my daughter is getting older. I mean, at the beginning of this year, she was just like mumbling gibberish. But now we're having full on sentences about all kinds of stuff. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Stop. Stay still, Stay still for the photo. Okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Cheese. And as I think about the conversations that we're now starting to have, I'm, I think a lot about how are we shaping her into the human that she's going to end up being. And so I'm constantly wrestling with this huge 
existential, like, I really want to be a good dad to my daughter. More than anything, I want to be a good dad to my daughter. And at the same time, I really want to be a good bike racer. So for the time being, I want to try to do both of those things to my best ability. I think as of right now, I'm doing a decent job at both. How do I be a good bike racer and a good dad at the same time? Because I don't want to compromise. I, I definitely don't want to compromise my being a good dad to my daughter. My number one advice to those DIYers out there is it takes longer than you think. I set out in August because the radar said it wasn't gonna rain for two weeks. And so I thought I could probably knock this out in two weeks, maybe four weeks. I could cut a hole in my roof of my house and convert it into an office. Like that would only take a month, right? Well, four months later and I just finished it. So uh, yeah, that tells you a little bit something about it. Granted, you know, I am trying to race bikes and take care of my family and work and do all that stuff in between. So it wasn't a full on dedicated project, but still regardless, it takes a long time to do these things. Dude, look at this. It is so worth it. This is awesome. This is like the coolest thing I've done. And that's the cool thing about DIY. I might have had a lot of people on Instagram telling me, bro, you're an idiot. You cut a hole in your roof. Like you're not even certified. Like who, who are you? And I'm like, bro, I'm a bike racer. I can do this. And, but look at like, at the end of this, I get to look around and think like, I did all this. And I learned a lot along the way. So don't be afraid to do things that might seem crazy to other people. The most influential book that I read this year, 2023, was Mindset by Carol Dweck. I'd highly recommend this book. It's very good. Basically, the, the entire premise of the book is that there exists two types of mindsets. You've got the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Fixed mindset people are constantly in this here and now, and I have to prove myself to everybody. Basically, if they fail at anything, they see themselves at a failure because they're constantly trying to prove themselves to the world. Whereas the growth mindset is more focused on what can I learn? How can I get better for future performances? Even if I fail now, what can I learn from that to make me better in the future. And I love that about this book. So here are a few quotes from this book. Page 21, people in a growth mindset don't just seek challenge, they thrive on it. And page 25, becoming is better than being. I had the worst cycling injury of my career this year. Back at the Blue Dome Crit at Tulsa Tough, I broke my wrist on the first night there and it left me off the bike for about six weeks. And it, it, it had me realizing how dangerous crits really are. Like a hundred plus dudes going Mach 10 around the track, all bumping shoulders through every turn. And the scariest part about it is they all think they can win and they're all, not all of them, most of them are willing to lose some skin to prove it. And that makes for pretty sketchy racing circumstances as I found out the hard way at that race. Yep, I'm flying through the air, this is not good. This was one of the reasons I decided to go to gravel because it seems a little less dangerous. At least I hold the cards as to when I crash, whereas in crit racing, it's a very much so dependent on if there's a crash up there, I'm probably crashing back here, which is what happened at Blue Dome. Although crash videos do make for good YouTube videos because my number one most viewed video on YouTube is the video from the race where I broke my wrist. Ironic, I don't know, but I don't think I want to break my wrist just for YouTube views. Piggybacking off of that, it really sucked not being able to ride my bike for about six weeks. I mean, I remember one day just sitting in bed with my laptop watching movies all day, like all the way until dusk. And then I finally, because I was just bummed out, like bummed out all day to the max. Like the weather was amazing. We were in Michigan, which is just beautiful in the summer. And I couldn't ride because I couldn't hold the handlebars. I had a trainer set up in the basement. I'm like, who wants to ride the trainer when it's this pretty outside? I finally pulled my crap together, made myself go for a run. 
And I remember getting back thinking, man, like I'm so grateful for the times that I can get out and ride my bike. And I think that helped to fuel the entire second half of my season because I never got an ounce of like burnout or anything. Like I was super motivated for the rest of 2023. I think it was just because I had this reawakening of just how enjoyable it is to be able to ride your bike. You don't realize how, how important something is to you until you lose that something. So just be grateful for the ability to ride your bike. I traveled to quite a few new places this year, getting, you know, kind of dipping my foot into that gravel world. And one of those places being Mexico. Uh, I did not know I was going to end up in Mexico at the beginning of the year, but I, I went to Mexico. Uh, I spent five, six days there and I only knew, I, I knew Adam Roberge loosely before I went there. I didn't know anybody else, but I left that trip having met all kinds of cool new friends. The Mexican people guys down there were super hospital. I mean, like the race promoter was so nice. Um, I left Mexico with a lot of friends and a wad of Mexican pesos in a rubber band, which was, uh, sketchy, but I'll take it. So yeah, meeting new friends is, is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm excited about that for next year too. I just wish I had that GoPro footage from the race. And last, but certainly not least is my focus on God. Now I might get a lot of flack for making this so public, but one of the most, actually the most important thing in my life is to be a good witness for Jesus. That means loving people really well, but it also means telling people about how good God really is. And if you haven't heard, he's pretty good. I mean, like he's really good. Like he's the best. Just to give you a glimpse, like those other quotes from those other books were pretty good, but like we're talking about the book of life here. Like, come on folks, listen to this. John 3.16, I know it's a popular verse, but it's, it's, it's popular because it's good. And it really shows you how good God is. John three sixteen says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's good. Know that God loves you and God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross in your place. And if you believe in that eternal life is yours. I just want to make that clear. Uh, that's always been true. That's, I've believed that for a long time, but that's just as true in 2023 as it was in high school when I became a Christian and it's going to stay true. I'm going to keep proclaiming this no matter how much flack I get, because I believe this wholeheartedly. And I, my faith is in Jesus. He's my savior. And that is going to stay the most important thing in my life for as long as I live. All right, that's a few things that I learned this year, but let me know what you learned in 2023 in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.